Yeah, y'all, is this. That's a blessing as well because they mistreated. Yeah, let me help y'all. They mistreated Joseph. He didn't do it right. But when God got Joseph and got Joseph where he needed Joseph to be, he sent Joseph back to get them folks and folks. He sent him back to get those folk. Why would you be calling me? He sent them back to get them folk. Now, that's special within itself to me because of the simple fact. You listen to what I just said to you earlier. I said, there was someone that done me very, very wrong. That literally, because of what they did, they don't want me to be nice to them. But how you know that God has redeemed you is when you can go back to what hurt you and help them. Oh, you know it's God. You know it's God then. If you still feel like I ain't got nothing for them, I piss on them and all that kind of stuff folks say. I wouldn't piss on them if they was on fire. All that. If you feel like that, you ain't got it. You ain't got it. You feel like that. How you know it's when he can send you back to the places that had you in bondage. When God can send you back to the places, to the people that put you in bondage, yonder comes that dreamer. That's what Joseph's brother said about him. Joseph just trying to tell them about a dream he had. He ain't asked for that dream. He ain't asked for no coat of many colors. I ain't asked for this. I ain't wake up now and then and say, you know, when I grow up, I'm going to be a pastor. Shoot, I thought I was going to be a sinner all my life, to be honest. Straight up in, in there, straight up a sinner. Didn't see none of this. So didn't ask for none of it. Joseph ain't asked for none of it. But he goes and tells them about his dream. They get upset about his dream. Joseph leaves out the room, comes back in the next day. They say, y'all become that dreamer. Get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. So they take this boy through all these challenges. Lord have mercy. They were going to kill him, but one brother said, no. Thank God for that one brother. They said, no, don't do that. Let's don't kill him. Let's just send him. Let's just send him over to slavery. Give him to the enemy. And not realizing that because the hand of God was on this boy's life, that there was only so much that you could do to the boy. Point blank, period. Because the hand of God is on my life, there was only so much that people have been able to do to me because of the hand of God. So they take this boy and sell this boy into slavery in the enemy's camp. He literally comes back leading the pack. <laughs> comes back leading the pack. And now i got to go over there and help them. That's messed up. And when he come back, he looked so different. <laughs> he looked so different that he had to tell them who he was. They didn't even know it was Joseph. He looked so fly. <laughs> he knew he looked so fly. They didn't even know. Now, I'm your brother Joseph. What? What? They struggled with Joseph being good to them. Because they knew in their hearts. What they had did to him. Amen. They knew Amen. what they had did to him. So they struggled with. So one thing I learned from that. I just rather go on and do you right. So I don't have to have that kind of struggle. Amen. There ain't nobody that I got to struggle with on this earth right now to do right by. 
Now, I got some people now that I just particularly they don't like to deal with, and that's because they're negative. I do not care for dealing with negative folk. I don't. I don't. That's just you want to know some of my pet peeves? I can tell you. I don't like dealing with negative folk. I do not like dealing with people every time you turn around it's a chief complaint. Because if, ever, if we all wanted to complain, we could. Yeah, I got up this morning and the lower back was hurting. I've had back trouble for years now. So when I got up this morning, my lower back was bothering me. I even struggled with the fact that, hey, if I put these shoes on, I wonder if they're going to put too much pressure on my back. i got to see how this going to feel, you know, for me to be able to do this. So let me walk in the house in these shoes first to see exactly how this is going to be. See, you don't even know about all the behind-the-scenes stuff that goes on. You just look and see what a person presents. But that's what I had to do this morning, just to see what the deal was. Hmm? You all know, sometimes I patch on my back. You know, so you don't know with all that. But I am not the type that allows that to stop me because I don't see a reason to let it stop me. I don't see a reason to let it shut me down. I don't want it to take my life. How oh, please, I just feel like that's defeat. That's just the way I feel. That's me. And yeah, you might not like, you might feel like it's okay. I don't care. That's you. But me, I feel like that's defeat. That's what I take that as. That is me being defeated. That is me not being able to enjoy my life. God did not put my life here for it to be like that. If there are people that do not have legs and they still enjoy their life and there are people that do not have arms and they still enjoy their life what in the world am I with two legs and two arms and mobility to be sitting around moping and whining about stuff? What am I? I ain't fixing to do that. There are people that are in situations where they're way worse than mine and they're making the best out of their life. You're seeing them all on videos and overcoming going viral being an overcomer of things, then what am I to say, no, I feel as though that is a defeat for me. I feel like that's taking away my life when my life only has so much I'm going to live anyway. I ain't going to be here forever. There's only so much to my life, and when I live my life, I want to enjoy my life. So I don't like all the negative. So I tend to stay away from negative folks. I tend to not deal with it because I don't care for all of that. I could whine too if I wanted to. I could whine too. Because not every, I don't have everything I would like to have. Mm -mm. I could whine too. I said, let me see if I can find it. I'm going to show y'all something. Yeah. Let me see. If I can find this. All right. So check this out. Yesterday I said it's 10 a.m. And I've dealt with numerous issues beginning at 5 a.m. I have to watch my aunt funeral via live stream because I wasn't able to make it to Tampa. That hurt. I'm tired because I didn't rest well. I'm not a good person to deal with when I'm tired. Not at all. I need to go to Pensacola. Didn't get to make it to Pensacola. I need a pedicure. Didn't get to go get one. I said I need two million dollars and some cows. Come on with it. See, I got complaints too. That's right. Hmm. I ain't got the two million yet, not a cow. So I got complaints too. I said, but on the brighter side of things, Quinn is back on their food truck today. All right. <laughs> I found some reason to tell God thank you. Some reason to be happy. That meant I didn't have to go on it because Friday I was on it. So I found some reason to tell God thank you. So I choose not to. I, look, what is life? What is it? If it's what? What? What was the purpose of it? 
what, what, what was the purpose of God giving it to you? You actually think that God gave it to you just for you to be miserable? Hmm? You actually think that God put you on this earth just for you to be miserable? See, even some of us, we, what we deal with, even physical, has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with stuff we've done. Right. Even like my lower back injury came from something that I did because I didn't know good lifting mechanics and didn't use them. And when you're young, you don't do stuff like you're supposed to. You're just reaching and pulling up stuff and not realizing that you're supposed to use your knees. You know, so you just reaching and you just grabbing stuff and all. And so I messed my back up in my 20s. And I'm 46 now. So that's just how long I've had to deal with that. So a lot of stuff that comes is because of things that I've done to myself. It was not God that did it. It wasn't the design or the plan of God that I suffer and struggle with it. It was because of what I did to myself. Self. Okay, if I do, you know what I'm saying? Not just not taking care of myself like I should. So then there, this, these are the consequences of it. And because of that being the consequences of it, then I can't say, well, you know, well, I guess God just put me in a struggle. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He created me with a purpose and a plan. He created me for victory. So I should have victory. I should have a redemption. That's what redemption is. Redemption is the purchasing or the buying back of something. And so when he redeemed me, he brought me back from that curse. He brought me back from that state so that I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to be restricted by that. The greatest force that you could ever have is the force to live beyond. That is the greatest force that you could ever have in your life. It's that force to say that I'm going to live beyond this. I'm not going to let this get me. I'm not going to allow this to destroy me. That is the force of living beyond. And I can tell y'all this right here. That force is misunderstood a lot. And it's misunderstood because there ain't many folk living in it. It's not a familiar force. Because not many people are not are going to take it. Because you know what? As soon as some type of resistance comes, the first thing we do is what? Ain't no fight back. Ain't no fight back at all. First little pain hit the body, what are we doing? Well, I can't go nowhere. Yeah, I can't go. I'm, I'm hurt. You know, well, that's kind of stuff. I can't do this, you know. Well, I can't do that. We're looking for something. The greatest thing that you could have is to resist it. Even in training, in which I, I keep saying I'm going to go get me a trainer. I keep saying, and I am going to do it. I mean that I'm going to do it. I'm going to get me a trainer because I just want one for this season. This next season of my life, I need to have me one, and I'm going to get one by George. This is the thing about it. Anytime that you've ever done with muscles or whatever they say what you have to do in order for muscles to develop like they pose to is to do what? You got to move past the what? The resistance. But what do we do? Soon as it comes I love it. I can't do this. I can't. Uh -uh. Oh no. Stop. Oh, stop. Quit! <laughs> Ain't going out there no more. <laughs> we don't want it. We can't deal with it. Now, next Thursday, I guarantee you, I'm going to be put to the test with that. Because next Thursday, they're going to put me to sleep. And he's going to take this arm back. He said, I can't do it while you're awake. It, it just wouldn't work, Miss Lee. It wouldn't work, Miss Lee. Trust me. It would not work for me to do what needs to be done while you up. No, ma'am. He said, and as soon as I get through, you got to do two weeks of intense um, therapy. Two weeks, he said. Five days a week. Wow. You got to go five days. My other therapy, I only went twice a week, I think. Maybe three. It was two or three times. He said, oh, no, you got to go every day. So I've already cleared the calendar, you know, 
as to say, I've told a family in Tampa, I need y'all to hold any emergencies or whatever.